Hello everyone and welcome back to the 2019 Isle of Man chess tournament. Uh, a lot of you have requested this game, uh, well a lot of you have requested other games as well but this game has been requested the, the most so I, I decided to show this one. And uh, it's uh, a Russian Grandmaster Evgeny Nair versus Vishwanathan Anand. Uh, Nair is the 2015 European champion. Uh, so definitely a strong player. His peak rating is over 2700, but at uh, at the moment he's somewhere around 2630. Uh, definitely the underdog in this matchup. And uh, before we check out the game, I would just like to share something that uh, I've uh, I've seen today. Uh, today is World Obesity Day, but also in the United States it's National Sausage Pizza Day. So I, I thought this was very interesting. So I decided to share it with you to have a to have a National Sausage Pizza Day on, on World Obesity Day. So, you know, if you thought that that's interesting, you might also want to share it with your friends at the bar and the library. So that being said, uh, let's check out the game. Nair with the white pieces opens with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, c4, e6, uh, knight to c3, and the bishop to b4. The Nimzo Indian defense is on the board. Uh, with e3 by Nair, uh, Anand castles, and now bishop to d2. Uh, uh, developing the bishop, unpinning, and now d5 by Anand. Uh, we have knight to f3, continuing development, b6 by Anand, preparing to fianchetto his light square bishop, uh, and rook to c1. Uh, we have bishop to b7 by Anand, and now uh, one trade in the center, c captures on d5, uh, we have e captures on d5, <coughs> Uh, and now bishop to d3, uh, preparing the castle, developing the light square bishop. Uh, and here uh, Anand goes back, bishop to, to e7, which is, a, which is a nice idea. You want the, the bishop to be able to help out with the defense. And also the, there are no more pins here, so it's not very useful. And you will not be wasting any tempo, uh, tempi as uh, black, uh, white's dark square bishop is also not optimally placed on d2. And also I would just like to mention that knight to e4 doesn't work here. It seems like something you want to do, especially in a, in a Nimzo Indian, uh, but after knight captures, you cannot trade here. That's the problem, one of the problems with the bishop here, as the white will just recapture and you will be down a piece. And if d captures, uh, bishop captures on b4, attacks the rook, you have rook to e8, and now bishop to b5, going after the rook. But now, uh, for example, if black goes uh, e captures on f3, bishop captures on e8, uh, f captures on g2, and now bishop captures on f7 with check. King captures and now queen to h5 check. King to g8 and rook to g1, you would get this crazy position uh, where white is up the exchange and since black doesn't really have uh, any development just yet and uh, not not uh, any, any good ways to take advantage of the white king still being in the center of the board, white will be better here. So just in case if you were wondering about knight e4 here. Uh, bishop back to e7 by Anand and now castles by Nair. Uh, we have knight b to d7 and now knight to e5. A standard idea, you want to get uh, this beautiful outpost for your knight, you want to cement it in with f4 and Anand has to decide whether he wants to keep the knight uh, on e5, maybe try to uh, wiggle around the position, maybe try to kick it away in the future with f6, but it's a very, very unlikely as if you've ever played position where, where your opponent has a knight on e5, it's really hard to kick it away from there. Uh, so here Anand decides to just capture it. We have knight captures on e5, d captures on e5, knight to d7, attacking the e5 pawn, and now Nair just defends it with f4. And this is now uh, a very pleasant position for white, and black has to decide how to go about it. First, Anand goes knight to c5, threatens the bishop here, and Nair just tucks it in for later. We have bishop back to b1, just uh, pu uh, keeping it uh, on the board, it's, it's a beautiful bishop. Uh, and now d4 by Anand. Uh, this has all been played before, so no new ideas here. Uh, attacking the knight, attacking the e3 pawn, and here knight to b5, threatening to now just win win the pawn and fix the pawn structure. And here's the problem. Uh, Anand cannot trade here. For example, if he trades, the bishop captures, you will constantly have a problem of this uh, knight and rook uh, attacking the c7 pawn. Uh, b4 is a is a pretty big a big threat. The knight will have to move, you will just win material. Even if you trade queens, it, it doesn't really help you. Uh, rook f captures on d1, and now how do you defend it? There's there's no good way. You can either play something like uh, rook uh, a to c8 or rook f to c8, and then just b4 kicks the knight away. You win the c7 pawn. Or if you try something like c6, 
uh, which saves the c7 pawn, but then you uh, give the, the control of the d6 square to white, knight d6, and this is just a beautiful position for white. So after knight to b5, you cannot trade, Anand decides to push the pawn d3, and with this push, Anand created a very nice passed pawn on d3. Uh, so what do you do now? b for now isn't all that great. If you try and force this idea of b for now, for example, knight to e4 and knight captures on c7, just rook to c8, uh, your knight is under attack, you have to move it, and now queen to d5 will be very strong. You have this beautiful queen bishop battery uh, threatening mate after the knight moves, also the knight is under attack here, and uh, black would be just much better here. So here, uh, Nair goes for a different idea. After d3, he goes knight back to d4, uh, now with ideas of queen to g4, followed by knight to f5, with some... Uh, attacking chances on the king side, and here Anand could go queen to queen to d5, threaten checkmate, and I would prevent it with queen to g4, as the queen wants to come to g4 either way. But first, Anand uh, secures his position on the queen side. He plays a5, b4 is no longer a threat, and only then will he uh, decide what to do on the king side and in the center. Uh, with queen g4 by Nair, now preparing knight to f5. Uh, and g6, of course, you don't want to allow this, but now you allow a different type of attack with f5 by Nair. And now uh, white still has the bishop pair, although for the moment the bishop pair isn't doing all that much. Uh, this uh, light square bishop is uh, pretty bad, and uh, for the moment the dark square bishop also not doing all that great. Uh, so here, again, Anand has to decide what to do, whether he wants to go queen to d5 and take it from there, or he wants... Uh, uh, to improve the uh, his pieces and maybe only then bring the queen to d5. He goes knight to e4. He says, uh, okay, first let's see what you're, you want to do with your bishop on d2. Uh, and Nair has a <laughs> very nice idea about what to do with the bishop on d2. Nair plays bishop captures on d3. He sacrifices uh, the bishop on d2. So already, uh, as of move 19, we have a peace sacrifice. So uh, Anand went for it. There is nothing better. He has to capture the bishop. Uh, Anand accepts the sacrifice, and now we have f captures on g6. So here uh, you have to ask yourselves, uh, can you go for the rook as well? It's, it's a very complicated line. For example, if you capture the rook, uh, then do you see how uh, white proceeds in this position? Uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple of seconds. You can pause the video and try to continue this attack with white if, if the, the rook was captured. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations on finding a winning move in a line that never happened over the board. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight e6. Just a deadly move, uh, threatening everything here. And after the knight is captured, it, the point is just to remove the, the f7 pawn, then uh, queen to h5, and there is no defense here. You can try to... Uh, prolong the game with rook f7, but it will not help you. Just pawn captures with check, king f8, check, king captures, check. Once again, now that you've removed the f7 pawn, king f8, and now you're going to capture rook captures on f1 with check, and there's nothing better here. Captures, captures, and now you're getting either mated or you have to give up the queen, and now white is, again, just uh, uh, completely winning. It will be mate very quickly. So here, you cannot capture the rook. Uh, Anand decides on f captures on g6. He's up a piece. He wants to trade even more material. Uh, so how do you continue this attack? Again, you're white, uh, what do you play here? Uh, I'm sure you can do it without even pausing the video. It's bishop captures on g6, of course. Uh, and now, again, you have to ask yourself, so, what, what can you do here? What, what are the threats? Of course, some very nasty discoveries uh, are possible if the bishop moves. So here, uh, Anand played king to h8. Also, uh, a possible line was bishop to c8. This is what I call the, the Paul Karras, when a bishop retreats to the... To the uh, back rank to help out with the defense. I call it the Paul Karras because of a very uh, special game I enjoy. It's uh, Rudolf Spielmann versus Paul Karras. If you haven't seen it, I do have it on my channel. It will be the first link in the description below. Check it out. Beautiful counter-attacking game by Paul Karras. Uh, but it, it was a possibility. Bishop to c8 uh, and, and then for uh, knight to f5, you block the attack. Uh, bishop captures. Uh, rook captures here. Uh, Anand would get a chance to trade a lot of pieces. Bishop captures and the now king to h8. Uh, but after rook to d1, Anand keeps the extra piece, but uh, it will be very hard. He will have to play extremely precise, uh, but it was a possibility. Uh, Anand decides for king to h8 first. He says, okay, I'm not... Uh uh, allowing you any discoveries. Uh, but Nair continues in his relentless attack. Bishop captures on h7. So again, what do you do here? Here Anand decides to trade uh, a pair of rooks. Rook captures on f1, we have rook captures on f1, and now can Anand grab the other rook as well? 
Well, if you capture it, knight captures on f1, you get bishop to g6 with ideas of queen h5 checked, followed by queen h7 and queen to f8 mate. Uh, queen to f7 mate. Uh, so you would have to try and block it somehow, let's say queen g8, but it doesn't help you. Uh, check, you'll go to g7, you, you will get knight to f5 check, the knight joins the attack, king f8, and now queen to h6 check. Uh, you will have to block and queen captures is mate as there is nothing more to be done here. So Anand has to figure out uh, how to how to get out of all this mess. He plays bishop to g5. He wants to get the bishop over to h6 and help out with the defense this way because the knight is coming either to e6 or f5. You will have problems guarding the g7 square. Uh, so knight to f5 by Nair uh, and now comes queen to d3. Uh, not only threatening mate on f1 but also uh, preparing the other rook uh, so the other rook can enter the game. Uh, here, Nair has to take a, take a step back from the attack and guard the, uh, the mate threat. He plays a rook to e1, uh, and now Anand goes for bishop captures on e3 with check. Uh, of course, you cannot move the rook because uh, queen to f1 would still be mate. Uh, so what do you do here? Uh, if you capture with the knight, then queen captures on h7, stops the attack. Uh, so what can you do here? Uh, king to h1. There are no more checks here. And now Anand has to uh, guard the mate threat, so he goes back bishop to h7. Again, if you capture it, then the queen can just capture the bishop here, it's not a problem. Uh, and here uh, we have queen to g6 uh, by, by Nair. Now preparing this nasty idea of queen f6 check, once the king captures the bishop, queen will capture on h6 with check, and then, or, or just, uh, the, yeah, capture on h6 with check, and then follow it up by queen to g7 mate. So Anand has to figure out how to defend against this. He plays bishop captures on g2 with check. And uh, here's a, a very critical moment of how to continue this uh, uh, game for Nair. Uh, w once again, uh, you can just try and pause the video and figure out wh how you would recapture the bishop or would you even recapture it. Uh, for those of you who uh, decided to capture it uh, with the king, that is exactly what Nair played, but it is not uh, the, the most uh, correct move. Uh, the correct move is to capture it with the queen, and now you have to go into this uh, line. King captures on h7, knight captures on h6, and now queen to f3, just uh, trade queens. And now, for example, if knight to g4, you can save the knight now. The, uh, the knight is protected. Now queen captures, king captures, and you get this endgame where uh, the material on the board is equal, but white is up a pawn. Uh, I mean, uh, it's equal uh, pieces-wise, but white is up a pawn, and it's a very strong pass pawn. So uh, the, the white would have excellent winning chances here. But, of course, Nair uh, is reluctant to... to uh, you know, go back from this idea. If he can just get this queen to f6 check and he, he, he wins the game. So he plays king captures on g2, uh, but now he allows Anand a very sneaky defensive idea. So feel free to pause the video once again. I know I'm asking you to pause the video a lot here, but there are a lot of very cool ideas here. So feel free to pause the video and try to find uh, an excellent defensive move for Anand uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on being such a brilliant defender. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen to f3 check. Point is, after king to g1, you have queen to f4. This queen to f4 move is such a hard move to find. Uh, it's it's a necessary defensive resource because it guards the, the h6 bishop. Now, after queen to f6, white will have uh, nothing better. For example, king captures. Now you don't have this mating idea of capturing on h6. White will have to be satisfied with a, a repetition here. So uh, after king captures on g2, queen to f3 check, uh, best idea for Anand. But Anand played queen to d5 check instead, probably to leave the f3 square vacated for the knight. Uh, uh, so, so he can use it uh, also as, as an attacking piece. But the problem is, Nair now has king to h3. Uh, Anand continues queen to d3 check, but now Nair plays king to h4, uh, and it was in this position that Vishwanathan Anand resigned the game, and a pretty big upset happened in round one as uh, Evgeny Nair takes down uh, former world champion Vishwanathan Anand. Uh, here Anand resigns, even though Anand had some 10 minutes on the clock, whereas Nair had a minute and a half, he decided there was no point in continuing because there is no good defense here. For example, Queen d8 check is just met with king to h5. And now if you trade queens, 
queen to g5 check, queen captures, uh, bishop captures, now bishop to g6 just wins as uh, you don't have any good way of per uh, stopping the passed pawn. Uh, all of the squares are covered, e7 is covered by the knight, uh, e8 is covered by the bishop, so it's an easy win. If you try knight f3 to guard the bishop and attack the rook, just rook f1 wins a piece. You can't save both the knight and the bishop, you would have to go after the pass pawn. And now king captures, you're just up a piece, three pawns each, uh, e it's an easy win. Uh, on the other hand, after king to h4, if you don't go queen to d8 check, you might also try knight to f3 check, it is possible, but after king h5, there are no more checks, and you don't have a good move here. Uh, whatever you play, queen f6 is coming. You can try rook f8, it does prevent mate for a moment, but queen captures on h6. Again, what do you play here? Rook to f7, uh, you have to play something, bishop g6 check, king g8, and now just captures, captures, and the queen to f6 check. Wherever you go, you're getting mated with the queen, so nothing nothing to do here. Every line in, ends in mate for Nair, <clears throat> and uh, I, I decided to award Nair the Morphe head uh, as he played such a beautiful, relentless attack. I didn't want to give him the Morphe head uh, before we finished the game, as uh, it would maybe spoil the video too much, but here it is. Uh, Nair gets the Morphe head. And it, I, I do hope you agree that he deserves this, as uh, it was just a, a beautiful attack. Even though uh, Anand had chances, but as it always is with uh, beautiful attacks, uh, there is always that one moment where, where you can defend, but if you don't take your chance, like Anand uh, missed the queen f3, he played queen d5, uh, then the, the attack just prevails. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, John Cousins and Barry Malone for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage of the Isle of Man tournament, uh, checking up on your suggestions and preparing the next big saga. Thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.